All right, so let me just go through a few verses here, right? Acts 2, uh, the apostles were defending their belief in Jesus. They weren't backing down in fear. They were very courageous. And he's saying God knew that Jesus would be handed over to you to be crucified and that you would execute him on a cross by the hands of lawless men. Yet it was all part of God's predetermined plan. God destroyed the cords of death and raised Jesus up because it was impossible for death's power to hold him as a prisoner. Amen? Death has been defeated by the resurrection. So if you have death hanging over your life, you say, no, it's been defeated. The cords of death have been cut. It can't hold me down anymore. Amen? That keeps me very excited because no matter what I deal with in this life, I know I have a better destiny ahead. And while I'm here, I want to be as effective as I can for God. Sin is going to stop that from happening. So no sin. I'm, I'm not giving you any door into my life. Doesn't mean I still couldn't make a mistake for sure. But there's just certain things that the world thinks is important. And God says, that's an abomination to God. You don't have to follow the world's way of doing things. Right. Daniel did not eat the diet of the Babylonians. And we don't have to eat the diet of the secular culture that we're living in right now. We eat the word. Eat this book. And, and memorize scripture. And use worship music to keep it going in your spirit because you have so many gifts inside of you. It's like an arsenal so that when you come into a situation, and there's a lot of hurting people right now just due to COVID alone. I mean, my prediction is they don't even realize how badly they're hurting from being locked down for 13, almost 14 months now. But when we start to re-engage, which frankly, I think this is amazing, right? It's so beautiful. We're in May. Uh, personally, I just feel a lot of stuff lifting off the culture because they're just getting outside and they're like so sick of lockdown. And that's a great opportunity for you to give them the hope that you have because they're dealing with trauma that they don't even recognize. All right, so I'll keep going. First Corinthians says, I'm aware of nothing against myself and I feel blameless, but I'm not by this acquitted before God. I think that's a, an unusual verse to use, but, but I found this as I was learning about prayer ministry. We don't really call it counseling because we don't charge a fee. There's, there's no cost. If you want prayer in this church, we'll, we'll pray with you. And if you're not here and you need prayer, we'll pray with you too, as long as we have the resources available. So it's not counseling, and it's certainly not psychology. The world's way of, of uh, helping people is to build up self. And Jesus said, crucify self, <laughs> right? So it's a pretty big difference, wouldn't you say? So yeah, it is a form of counseling people, but it's not where we, you know, are licensed in charge of fees. It's just biblical ministry. We read the Bible. We ask the Lord to help show us what the root systems are. And this is an important one because Paul is just aware uh, that he's not fully aware of everything going on in his life. So he says, I'm not aware of anything against myself, but I'm not acquitted by that. Just because I don't see it doesn't mean I might not have a blind spot. Husbands and wives look at each other. Do you have a blind spot? How would I know? I'm blind. <laughs> to that thing. Can I have permission to tell you when I think you have a blind spot? Yes. I'm not going to make you say it out loud, but it would be a good idea because you're not enemies. You're not adversaries. You should value your spouse's opinion even when you disagree. They don't wake up in the morning and say, how can I mess up his life today? What could I say to really offend him? It's like, no, it's like, you, you don't see it, but everybody else does. <laughs> so just because I'm not aware of it, Paul is just giving us this really important piece, doesn't mean that something doesn't have to be taken to the cross, and your spouse is a good one to tell you if that's true, and I've certainly benefited from that. In my marriage, I hope Trisha would say the same, that we can help each other, we're here to help each other. I don't want to tear my spouse down. We're one. So, you know, the way you say it definitely matters, right? And, and being kind about it. Speak the truth, but do it in love. So, look, we're going we're gonna to keep fighting this for people all over the world because we're getting you know, prayer requests now from a lot of different places. We know it works, okay? Will it work every single time? Well, I, I haven't had that experience yet, but are we going to still keep trying? Yes. Because the resurrection power brings out a different person on the other side of the process. That old man really died. And now there's a new person. What's challenging about that is that you don't know how to live this new life yet. 
because you got so used to that old habit that you became good at it. And there's an expression in the world, the known devil is worse than the unknown devil. You know that one? Because that's how it feels like, well, it might not have been very healthy, but at least I knew how to do it. No, we trust God. You're going to raise up the new me on this side of that, and I'm going to learn quickly because I'm ramped up because your spirit lives inside of me, and the word is true, and I'm going to become that new person in whatever that thing is that I had to get delivered from. You with me? All right, good. So, First Timothy, I'm so grateful. This is t uh, Paul speaking, kind of openly just confessing that Jesus Christ, he made me adequate to do this work. He went out on a limb entrusting me with this ministry. Does anybody else feel that way sometimes? Yeah, not so qualified, and this is the message version, so it's just, you know, kind of plain language. I like it. I'm so grateful to Christ Jesus for making me adequate to do this work. He went out on a limb, you know, and trusted me with this ministry. The only credentials I brought to it were violence, witch hunts, and arrogance. <laughs> not a very good resume for a minister. But I was treated mercifully because I did not know what I was doing, and I didn't know who I was doing it against. And that could bring you back to the road to Damascus. And the light just blinds Paul on the road to Damascus. And, and that was his experience when he realized who he was persecuting was Jesus, the Son of God. And it became real. And he says, grace mixed with faith and love poured over me and into me. Anybody have that testimony? Oh, thank you, Lord, that your grace mixed with faith and love poured over me and into me. And all because of Jesus. And then a little stretch here in Ephesians where he's talking about the same thing. It's almost the same language. Same language. This is God's plan for, for this ministry, for this church, for each one of us. This is God's plan that both Gentiles and Jews who believe the good news will share equally in the riches inherited by God's children. So if you know people that are struggling, let's say, with addictions, it's an easy uh, it's an easy thing to understand that they're really not in control, right? And, and you love them, and you don't want them bound by that. It's like lecturing them and condemning them is not going to help break that thing off, is it? It's showing them a better way. It's asking the Lord, what's the combination to the lock of their heart? Right? That's what Holy Spirit wants to do inside of us, is show us how to approach each person. Because we're all fearfully and wonderfully made. And what worked on Monday with this person won't work on Tuesday necessarily with this person. Because each one of us is different. Sometimes what worked on Monday with this person won't even work on Tuesday with the same person. Right? Because they're in a different mood that day. I won't get into that one. Both are part of the same body. The Gentiles and the Jews are part of the same body. Paul was fighting a big battle here because the Jewish people did not want the Gentiles coming in. At least the religious Jews did not. And, and he had a radical message. By God's grace and mighty power, I've been given the privilege of serving him by people wanting to kill me when I tell them the Gentiles come in. <laughs> right? Like he was getting stoned and just didn't care. He was a courageous man. It's another thing that happens when Holy Spirit's inside us. We get courage to speak the truth. Though I am the least deserving of all God's people, God graciously gave me the privilege of telling the Gentiles about the endless treasures available in Christ. Lord, we thank you right now. Just say it right now. I thank you for the endless treasures available through Jesus, through your word, and through the power of your spirit living on the inside of me. And then we just want to say this, come Holy Spirit, make me more aware of your presence every minute of every day. Man, that's a good prayer. It's a really good prayer. He's just sitting there waiting for you to invite him in to every situation. There's nothing that he's not better at than we are <laughs> in our own strength.